yeah, I, I think you see that in every railroad case, right? There's going to be some um, argument that the claims are preempted because of the regulations under the Federal Railroad Safety Act. Um, but in this case, you know, there's definitely things that went wrong that are governed by those regulations. Um, Norfolk Southern just didn't live up to those minimum expectations, but there's a lot that went wrong here that the government doesn't touch on at all. So it's kind of completely outside of those defenses or those preemption arguments. Perfect example of that is, you know, there's been focus on the hot box detectors, which for those that don't know, are sensors that are uh, installed at regular intervals along the track. And they're very precisely calibrated to measure the temperature of the wheels as they go by on the rail car. Um, the use of those detectors, the, um, uh, the, the interval that they're placed, how often they need to be inspected and calibrated, all of those things, they're not, they're not governed by federal regulations whatsoever. So what the company does is subject to kind of standard negligence principles when it comes, when it comes to, to those things. More importantly, and Dina alluded to it just now, you know, this case has an actual explosion that happens in a residential community that straddles the line, the state line between Ohio and Pennsylvania. That's not governed by any federal regulation. That kind of hazardous material response, um, that's completely outside of the playbook. In fact, that's only ever happened one other time, and it was in the 1980s in Louisiana. So Norfolk Southern's decision to do that is wholly outside of anything that the federal government has to say or any defense that the federal government gives railroads under something like the Federal Railroad Safety Act.